Hi, I'm Saben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Size of LLC Converters Magnetics Frequency Dependence. Shown here is a LLC converter in a half bridge configuration. We have here a square wave generated by these two transistors. This is the resonant net for network, which is composed of uh, two inductors and a resonant capacitor. We have here a transformer, bridge rectifier, shown here a filter, and then this is representing the load. This will be the first harmonic representation of the system with an RAC representing the load. We see here the resonant element and the loading. Now the input voltage here to the transformer is going to be a square wave because the current that is um, fed to the transformer is actually clamping the transformer to either V out or minus V out and when reflected to the input we're going to see V out over N and then minus V out over N. Now looking more closely here we see that the current through this inductor, this parallel inductor, is going to be triangular shaped because we have a square wave voltage across it. Now we can build this converter by having a discrete transformer, inductor, and two inductors in fact. Or we can combine this inductor with this structure, so in the so-called integrated magnetics, so that the input inductance to this element will be the required uh, resonant inductor L sub M. In this case this is going to be a coupled inductor. This is not a transformer anymore because the transformer is transparent to the power. That is all the power coming in is coming out except for some power circulating for the magnetization. But in the case of a coupled inductor we store energy, so therefore we need an inductor that will store energy. This would necessitate uh, putting a gap in the core or using a distributed gapped uh, core. And we define here for this particular generic core the cross-section area of the core, and this is the area of the winding, the winding area. Now I'm going to work at the MKS units, that is meters, volts, amps, and Tesla, etc. Now the problem that I'm going now to discuss is how to estimate the core size of this coupled inductor. Now we have here a gapped core, we have a primary, and then we have a number of inductors. In our case, uh, it's going to be like a total of two windings, but of course it could be more than two, we might have an auxiliary power supply, etc. So let's see how we tackle this problem. We start with consideration of the magnetic flux density limitation uh, to find an expression for the cross section area of the core. So I am expressing the voltage as LDI dt and then N d phi dt, equating the two. Let's not go all the over all the mat, and I'm coming up with this expression which shows what is the cross-section area, and it turns out to be a function of the inductance. I, this would be the primary inductance. I pick n number of turns and B max. Now B max is not the saturation, it's not related to saturation of the core, but rather related to the losses, because at high frequency, the B max is limited by the core loss and it has to be spe specified such, a, such that the core loss will not exceed what is required. Now in the PWM case, the swing of the delta B is small around some DC value. However, in a resonant converter, like we are discussing here, uh, we're going to have a bipolar uh, B max or B change between say B max plus and B minus max minus. Now I'm going later on to cover the issue of how to select these values. Another consideration is the area of the winding and 
what, how does it relate to the parameters of the converter. Now we define the current density as the current over the cross-section area of the wire. So the wire cross-section area is the IRMS over J. Now J is selected according to the, again, thermal issues, uh, warming up, and uh, related, of course, to the resistance uh, of the wire. So now the, the area occupied by a specific winding, say I, is then the number of turns times the cross-section area of the wire divided by K. Now K is the filling factor, that means uh, how well do we pack all these windings uh, one to the other, whether there are voids in between, and of course the limit is one, and usually K will be smaller than one. So the, the total area occupied by the winding is the sum of the area occupied by uh, each, of, each of the windings. Using this expression and the expression for the area of each of, of the winding, uh, we can divide out the first, the number of turns of the first winding, here it is, and come up with this expression which says that the total winding area is related to the, this ratio of number of turns, I RMS of each of the winding, and J and K. Now, we have found earlier this A sub E from B max consideration. So now we multiply these two and get an expression for the very important factor or parameter, which is AP, which is the area product, the cross-section area times the winding area. And this is actually a parameter that allows one uh, to select a core. You can go now to a, a catalog or data sheet and find out what is the core size that will meet the specific requirement for your converter. So now let's have a look at this expression and see how does it relate to frequency, which is the subject matter of this uh, presentation. Now, I peak and etc. are related to the design of the converter, the power level, uh, voltage, turns ratio, etc. And so, therefore, uh, if I'll design the converter to one frequency or another, these will not change. What will change is actually two parameters one is the inductance, and one is uh, B max. Now, B max as I've already said, is selected such that uh, the power loss will be the acceptable one for the design. A manufacturer, vendors, give us this type of a graph. Here is the B max, and this is the power loss of the core in, in this case, kilowatt per meter cube, which is equal to milliwatt centimeter cube. So, in the design, one has to select an acceptable uh, power loss level, and say if I select it to be, say, 100 uh, milliwatt per centimeter cube, then I can see here that depending on the operating frequency, uh, I'll have different limits for B max. For example, for 0.7 megahertz, uh, this would be about 50 millitesla, while at, uh, say, 3 megahertz, it'll be around, say, uh, 12 or 13 millitesla, much lower. Now, these two curves are, by the way, for two different uh, temperature of the core. So, we have then B max frequency dependent, and then we have also the inductance is frequency dependent, because as we, say, increase the frequency, uh, the required inductance will be proportional lower because the inductance will be like 1 over uh, the switching frequency. So as we go to a higher frequency, the inductance, the required inductance, both for LM and LR, is going to be lower. On the basis of these two, and assuming that I peak N, J, and K are going to be the same, I'm going to discuss it a little bit later, but let's now assume that these are the same and we are just left with L, the inductance, 
and B max, which are frequency dependent, I can divide AP for the high frequency by the AP of the low frequency, and turns out that this uh, factor is then the frequency times B max. That is the low frequency times B max low frequency and frequency, the high frequency times B max of the high frequency. This is actually a sort of figure of merit. So this is of course for a given loss core law. So let's have a look now what really happens in the real world. I've taken an example of uh, two favorite materials. One N87, one PC200, two of them of TDK Epco. This is just an example, no endorsement here. There are many companies who are making these ferrites, and this is just an example. So this is for the 100 kilohertz design, which is the baseline for which I'm going to, to compare a high frequency design, which is based on the PC200. I assume that the power loss limit of the core is 100 milliwatts per centimeter cube. So this is for the 100 kilohertz, and we find here that the B max is 100 millitesla. So happen. Now for the PC200 material, it really depends on the frequency. There are two lines here for two temperature. I've taken just the midpoint here as I've taken it here. And looking for the B max for the different frequencies and plugging it in into this relationship, I got this table. So what I've found is that for high frequency operation, uh, 700 to uh, kilohertz to three megahertz, the reduction ratio is about fourfold, four to five fold. So if I work say at, uh, in the range of uh, say two megahertz, it's uh, 0.22 the size, the AP, the area product of the high frequency as compared to one, which is the 100 kilohertz. So there is no question that when designing an LLC converter for high frequency, and if you have the right ferrite, like here is the case, you can get a AP which is lower, and therefore the size of the coupled inductor or the magnetic element will be smaller. Of course, this goes uh, same way for the LR because it is also an inductor. So in general, we can say that AP is going to decrease given the proper ferrite, but there are some other issues uh, to, co to consider. One of them is the fact that at high frequency you need the lead wire and then the packing decay might be a little bit lower. So the maybe the ratio it will not be this number that I have found, but uh, a little bit higher, that is the reduction in size will be not as shown here. Another issue that was brought up is the question of leakage. Now, as you go up, uh, it was said that uh, the leakage losses will be higher. However, let's go back here for a second. We have leakage, of course, uh, in this structure, in this coupled inductor structure, but this leakage is sort of absorbed into the resonant element because we are walking in resonance. This is not hard switching. So if it would have been hard switching, then we might have had a problem. But since LLC converter is a resonant converter, so the leakage issue is really not an issue. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found this presentation interesting and that it might be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.